Hello everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. We are continuing our deep dive series and setting our sights on everyone's favorite flying ghost, Falstad. He has three builds that are pretty well defined. His Q ability is all about big explosions around his hammer. His lightning rod is focused damage on a single target. And then he also has an auto attack build that can deal some pretty big damage if you use your abilities properly. Today's build is going to be focused on the Lightning Rod, a deceptively difficult build for Falstad, but if you focus on your quest early in the game, you can do a lot of very focused damage later on. I'll show you exactly how it works in today's video. Don't forget to check out our deep dive playlist down in the video description. And hey, can I get a like on this video? Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in the Sky Temple today. The friendly team, Falstad, Zul'jin, Stitches, Lucio, and Samuro. The enemy team, Uther, Junkrat, Muradin, the Lost Vikings, and Mephisto. At level one, we're going for Dishonorable Discharge. Reduce the Lightning Rod cooldown by two seconds. You get that just by picking it up, so bringing us down to an 11-second cooldown right away. Then, as we continue to channel our W onto our enemies, our W ability is going to continue to stack up damage. This does have a bit of a weird play style with it, but a wonderful hook from the Stitches is going to set me up for at least one stack here. In this particular game, I think Uther and Murden are going to have to be our targets every single time. And I am definitely of the mindset of playing more aggressive early on to get these charges so you can use the benefit much longer. Unfortunately, it looks like I overstayed my welcome just a little bit too much there, but you get the idea. It is so hard to stack this up throughout the course of the game. You only get stacks after your first three lightning rod strikes. And it's not like these things are super quick. They take their time. Maintaining your distancing with your enemy can be super hard if they are a character like this who's just teleporting around all the time. They'll be leaving your range all the time. But this Uther just walked up again and I can just walk with him right down the lane and pick up my stacks as uh, with each little footstep, with each little feather flap. Now I'm looking at Murden here. He can jump out of it, so I wanna move up a bit further. And you get what I'm saying. I think this posturing is super duper important in the early game. I just want to hang out with my healer and be around them to get the nourishment so I can continue to posture and look like I'm doing something versus these guys. If we do that effectively enough, once we get to, you know, that level 13 power spike, we're going to be looking pretty good. Like we're trying to set ourselves up for success here. Junkrat coming in and he just threw something. Let's see if we can get in range of him. Uh, Staying in. <gasps> oh, dude, one more lightning strike and we would have had that. I should have just turned and autoed. Oh my God, that's okay. We still got the stacks and the stacks are the most important thing. At level four, we're picking up static shield. Lightning rod grants a shield equal to 4% of Falstad's maximum health. That would explain my earlier findings. So I've been trying to warm up with this game, or excuse me, with this, uh, with this build in each game today on stream. And I thought that shield was damage focused. That makes sense. So it's a flat rate based on my HP. All right. Uh, I am getting blasted on the side. Let's try to get back into the base without dying, shall we? Standing near Lucio should heal me up pretty quick. Muradin's standing close. Let's get the lightning rod on him and see if he just ignores the damage. I'm even going to move up for a stack there if I can. We are at 10 stacks right now. So... Uh, at level seven, we're going to get a pretty big boost. This is when we get an increased number of strikes and a pretty sizable range increase to our W ability. So we don't have to be as close to our enemies to stack up these, these damage increases. And if we do put our, put our sights on someone like a Muradin, who's kind of just sitting still, or an Uther who's running towards our group, we can take advantage of that by pumping in even more damage into them. Junkrat taken down. The enemy team is down some soak right now, but I imagine the Vikings are going to more than make up for that. I'm trying to clear middle as I'm walking towards this enemy team, hoping for level 7. We didn't find it. Focusing Uther here simply because he doesn't have the mobility to get away. Unfortunately, he immediately got away! Uh, four seconds until I can cast it again. Let's just try to get some autos out on Muradin here. Now focusing Uther up top! Oh, he just moved out. We're at 12 stacks now. The hammer goes out and 
we explode it for a little bit more damage. Who's up in the top lane right now? Uh, top objective right now. If I can, oh, I don't have a sip. Mana's low, I'm just gonna go up and look. We're also gonna take charged up here. It looks like they did move away. Oh, they got all of it. Ooh. Uh, Uther once again moving forward. We're focusing him. I will go way under tower for this. Especially when Muradin wasn't there to stop me. I wanna be aggressive, I wanna get those stacks. And that was a good assassination. Okay, heading back to base now. Level eight to the enemy team's level seven. Whenever you're ahead of the Vikings, that feels really good. That feels really good. Uh, at level 10, in most situations, okay, with Falstead, in most situations, Mighty Gust is going to be the better choice. That's just how it... Oh. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. Let the first person who hasn't done that throw the first stone, okay? We've all been there. <laughs> this is why I like W build. You just put your cursor over them and it does all the work for you. Speaking of which, enemy team moving up here. We have Mephisto in sight. Oh my God, but the crowd control train is going fucking crazy between Uther and Muradin and they spaced out those stuns really well. And I am literally entering into junk rat damage when I'm trying to AOE a fucking lane down. That was scary. Oh, that was pure panic. Oh my God. So one important thing to note that I didn't remember uh, when I started playing Falstad again today is his Q build, his Q ability, excuse me, does have the detonation built in now. That used to be a Q build exclusive. That is no longer the case. So you should be trying to constantly throw out your Q and make sure you press it again for some extra damage on the end. This helps your lane clear uh, no matter which build you are playing now. Gonna hide right here for a second. Enemy team hitting level 10 at the same time as us. Mighty Gust is available. And it looks like the team wants to use it on Uther. So I'm gonna fly here. Um, Gust him back that way. Great bubble. And now we just follow him under the tower with our attack that doesn't miss and increases in damage with each shot. Uh, now we do have a bit of a problem of getting out of here if Junkrat continues to chase us, but it looks like we should be fine. That was a very good Divine Shield. Good, nice reaction time. And you can see with that explosion, I'm trying to hit it on the mage so it damages as many enemies there as possible. We're at 21 stacks of our Dishonorable Discharge right now as the fight is continuing down to the bottom lane. We do see some easy damage we can get right here if I can keep him in range. Q out. Okay, falling back. We were able to take down the enemy team's Muradin while we were pushing the damage away there too, so that's pretty good. 10 seconds left on our ultimate here. You could do something really cheeky and jump over this wall with barrel roll if you see someone move into the wrong spot. So like that would have been a great example there. Uh, if we see an opportunity again, I will try to do it. But I imagine with the objective done, they're probably not really gonna walk forward. Yeah, we're chilling. Uh, enemy camp is up, but let me show you one of the strengths of this build that I wasn't utilizing to the full extent in my warm-up games. Uh, if you ever have time where you can siege, especially after getting a few stacks, we're only at 24 right now. Uh, let's imagine we were done with this quest and we were dealing like a billion more damage. Nice, he wasted the stun. Let's keep him in range. Less nice, so oh good. Um, if he teleports away, I have damage. Okay, perfect. We're just gonna put this on Muradin and see how he reacts to that. He doesn't respect it at all. Oh my God, Muradin's my new stack target. That's our new guy. Let's gush these guys off. Make sure our healer gets out of there, no problem. Level 13's here, and now, with each strike of our lightning rod, 25% more damage is added on with each of the lightning bolts. Uh, that is incredible. I think I read that right. Was it 25%? It's a lot. Uh, let's see if we can get down to Dingo here. The shield is out. That means Uther can't protect himself and we will just try to keep him in range of that. Uh, don't wanna be stunned by Muradin, no thank you. However, we can get him in lightning range now. He backed up, hammers out, big AOE on the enemy team. And I'm just trying to trickle in some auto attacks here from safety. Hey, it's the Vikings. I haven't seen them all game. Uh, objective is up in 18 seconds. Sippy Cup is available in uh, 50, so I think I'm going to leave pretty quick. Nice. 
Uh, maybe I have to stay. I wanted to top off on mana, but I can get free stacks off of this Viking here unless he has jump. <laughs> There's the jump. Uh, still, might still be able to get a kill. We got it. Uh, he doesn't have jump now, so where'd the other Viking go? Oh, hey, bud. Hey, you coming back here? Please don't. Oh, God. Sorry. Sorry, Lucio. Bye. Bye, Lucio. Uh, chat, that may have been my fault. Chat, that one may have been my fault a little bit. I'm gonna hide right here. Well, let's, let's just tank this one. If anyone moves up, we'll lightning rod him. We're at 34 stacks right now. Looks like we do have a Viking. He probably has jump. Let's just get some stacks. Oh, yeah. Co totally cancels the channel when he jumps. Okay. Well, someone has to kill this. That's going to be me. I'm going to lightning rod the higher health one, and it'll probably die before I can auto attack this one down. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the base, and we will fly towards this fight if there's anything going on here. Uh, we are level 15. Looks like the enemy team is hitting it at the same... Uh, yeah, about half a level behind. They're about to be on the same tier. Potential fly in here, especially if Stitches is rotating. Looks like he's clearing. Nothing wrong with that. Just an observation. We can fly in behind these guys and do a Mighty Gust basically at any point. And it can be extremely disruptive. Uh, if they are rotating down, I'm going to keep pushing here. And we're going to get Afterburner. Barrel Roll increases our movement speed. Allows us to shoot off like a fucking rocket in some cases. Uh, Muradin's coming to me. Oh, hey, bud. Oh, hey, nowhere to go, huh? Nowhere to go. I think boss is a phenomenal idea here, and I can articulate it in exactly one second. Look at our boss damage. Bro, we're doing like 700 a tick right now between our auto attacks and our W. I'm out of that stun, right? I'm pretty sure I could just solo this boss. Let's just push this guy out of here early. He popped Divine Shield early. Oh, and we'll get some more W damage out on him as he's dying. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Oh, one Viking left. Let's see if we can get in range. That increased movement speed coming into play now. <coughs> coming into coming into play now. There it is. We got it. We got it. All right. I'm going to back really fast. 25 seconds on the next objective. I want to be full of mana. Let's push this in. I do wish I had slightly better lane clear. I'm not going to lie. But our damage is pretty good. You know what? In fact, let me show you what our tower damage looks like before I leave. It's just gone. Sorry, was there a tower here? Not anymore. Um, uh, I'm not going to stay. We're leaving. We're leaving. I will help with Uther. Free stacks. Thank you. Oh, dear God. Bye. Bye. I'm leaving. Sorry, I was just seeing myself out. Yo, fuck these walls. I'm taking it with me. <laughs> Three code and we're scared. We're leaving. I thought there was a reset mechanic in here somewhere. Am I crazy? Oh, I have to get, I have to max out my quest in order to get resets. Bro, that is so hard to do. So if by some weird mystical magic, if I am able to complete my quest and get 75 stacks, not only does that mean 75% increased damage on my W ability. Uh, hold on. And hold on. Hold on. But also, if I were to like kill a Viking, I get an instant recast and I could put it on another person. If I was... If I was to, like, finish off their front line, I could immediately start casting on the back line. Oh, that's dirty. <laughs> From my come on, give me stacks. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't jump. Don't jump. Yeah, give me stacks, big man. Yeah. Oh, great jump. Yes. Hold on. Kill him. That's just a kill. Oh, divine motherfucking shield on a Viking. Okay, you made me mad. All right, you made me mad. Okay, I got good Muradin channel here. Even with the Stitches hook, great Muradin channel. Uh, we can boost right over this. 
Get in range of this guy really easy. Ooh, not anymore. Oh, that's okay. No jump means free stacks here. Okay, jump came back. Um, I could take wind tunnel here. And that would allow us to perma stun this team in some situations. Um, I think I'm going to go epic mount though. Because they have Vikings, and I can stop them from soaking basically anytime we want. Like, it's a good good opportunity to counter Vikings with flight. Uh, come on in, bud. Water's fine. Uh, in three seconds, I can recast. Is he looking at me? Let's make sure he's not. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Ah. Um, we do have Gust if we need it. Good job. Or I could Gust them, potentially. Okay, so with Epic Mount, I am everywhere all the time. 25 second cooldown allows us to be anywhere in the blink of an eye. This allows us to soak, which by this point, you're already level 20. So why do you need to soak? You know what I mean? But... Also, counter pushes from characters like the Vikings or Sylvanas. Be the first one to be at objectives and run away and give it to Muradin. <laughs> Hold on, I can kill this pretty quick. And if I do, I'm in absolutely no danger. And if Muradin comes back, look at that. We had a whole group waiting on him. We kill this one so I keep a shield longer. Okay, we got this. We're way ahead of the curve. Okay, that looks totally fine. So from here, I'm just going to start backing. And then we're going to use Epic Mountain to get into the fight and see if we can have some kind of an impact here. If I win in right now, I would just be killed. So we're going to use our global ability to heal up as fast as possible. I'm going to fly into the bush so they don't see me. They saw me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fight seems mostly over except for these guys chasing after Samuro right now so I'm going to take a camp I'm going to use this little bit of downtime to try to push for my team look at our lightning rod damage on that first giant isn't that absolutely nuts I think that's insane I feel like it's a very YouTuber thing to say everything's insane like it looks really good in a YouTube title but single target damage w with this build is kind of nuts uh, I think we totally just back away from this. There's no reason to be fighting that right now. I'm worried about what's going on at the top of the screen too, but I'm having trouble getting over there. Um, with the Vikings, you could definitely argue that a W build would be better in this situation because of the large amount of AOE we can do, uh, like if they're grouped up like that. Um, I could just cut him off and kill him. Nope. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, I found the... Oh, yes, ready! Oh, yeah! That's what it's about. Did someone say helping hand? Oh. Kill that wall. Get that wall out of there. Uh, I Honestly, boss, 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 boss. They're never going to see it coming. If they do, they're stream snipers. Confirmed. Confirmed because I said so. We're just going to utilize my single target damage here to get this shit out of here super quick. And we're going to definitely fly on purpose. Definitely fly on purpose over our victory to celebrate it. Beautiful play. 100% optimized. Oh, we do have a demon in the belly who root stitches next to where he's coming back to. Interesting strategy. <laughs> didn't work. Turns out it didn't work out. Uh, we're doing a little bit of damage on the building that matters. So I'm going to zoom in and do some more single target damage to it. And ladies and gentlemen, that is W build Falstad. Did we complete our quest? No, it's really hard. It's so hard. How are you supposed to do that? Hey! 
Why am I MVP? They don't know. They didn't list any reasons. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. We did it. What did our damage actually look? <laughs> you know, damage is subjective. I think it's important to remember that. You know, what is damage anyway? <laughs> we, we have dishonorable discharge at level one, static shield at level four, charged up at level seven. We went for the mighty gust at level 10, and I tried to utilize it pretty well. I think we got some pretty good gusts in that game. Uh, you could also argue, like I was talking about with the Q build, uh, going into the Vikings because they're grouped up and you could do a bunch of damage. You could also argue that Shock and Awe or Hinterland's Blast, I don't remember what it's actually called anymore, uh, could be a better choice there because you could get more resets. Although they could just jump over it, just like they were dodging my lightning charge. Thunder Strikes at level 25 really amps up the damage quite quickly. I think once you get here, once you get level 13, you just go and start sniping buildings every chance you get. The damage here is really, really good. Afterburner at level 16 to help us stay alive, but also keep us in range of our enemies. And in this particular game, I was just feeling the epic mount. I think Falstead has some really good level 20s. Uh, and you should honestly consider all of these. Even the increased range could even keep you safer, even if you're not going for an auto attack build. That's going to do it for this episode of the Deep Dive. Don't forget to check the playlist down in the video description to see even more Deep Dive videos. Hit the thumbs up button on the way out, and I'll see you guys again soon.